Oh yeah, got him, got him, got him, got him. Come here, buddy. Ow, you bit me. Why did you bite me? I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. Oh my God. <laughs> Dude. That was incredible. Look at me, let me see him. That's incredible. Nice job. Wow, look at how green they are here. So green. So we were just sitting over there having lunch and all of a sudden there's this commotion. And that commotion is this guy running right through our camp. But that wasn't the most exciting thing about this catch. Our new friend Mikey over there saw this guy go right into the water, right by those rocks over there. And Mikey jumps in the water and disappears. And he's under there for at least an hour. Just swimming around, using his gills to breathe underwater. And he comes up with this guy. Look at this green iguana. So this is the first green iguana that I've seen in Suriname. And you know, we've all seen tons of green iguanas, but did you know that there's actually geographic variations in green iguanas? So where you find these guys, like let's say a little further north than here, they could be more red, more orange, down further south, they could be much darker. Here in Suriname, look at this guy. This is a perfect example of a Suriname green iguana. We've got those blue flecks in there. We've got all that green little flecks in there. We've got all those black little flecks in there. We've got all those yellow flecks in there. <laughs> Did you see me flex just then? <laughs> but look at, I mean, look at that face. That is just... I mean, this is just a gorgeous iguana. And he's getting a little surly because, you know, the man fish over there pulled him out of the river. But I, just imagine that, being out here in the Amazon, just eating lunch, eating a big old peacock bass, and all of a sudden this guy just runs right through your camp, dives in the river, and then a crazy man jumps in after him and grabs him. It's crazy. This is just crazy. And the craziest thing about this is that this is a big adult, but look at that tail. Something actually grabbed that tail, broke it off, and that's a regrowth. That is pretty amazing. You are one badass iguana. You guys wanna see an iguana swim? I love watching them swim, they're so good at it. Watch this tail go. Oh, we didn't even see him swim because he was just gone. That's how good they are at it. He's just gone. Into the garbage chute, fly so boy. So fast. Oh my gosh. That is what I absolutely love about life here in the Amazon. I mean, we would have just seen that iguana dive underwater and Bob, we would have been like, oh, well that was an iguana, there he goes. Yeah. But Mikey, I mean, he just, he didn't even hesitate. He just dove right in the water to get him. And Dave, let me just say that the reason you saw that iguana tear through here is because it was up in a tree and I was contemplating climbing that tree. I took like one step and I went, no, I'm not catching this. And then Mikey came up and climbed the tree. Really? The iguana jumped out of the tree and ran this way. So this was, this had all started in a tree up there. All started in a tree. Yeah. And ended submerged under rocks. That iguana knew exactly where to go. Wow. Like there's a predator after me, I'm going to the water immediately. Wow. Even though it was pretty far, that's a long run well, for yeah, him to well, go. We saw him, we yeah. saw him tear, like here's our camp. So this is where we eat. Way up there is where we're actually sleeping. He came tearing right through here. And then we watched him like splash in here. And then we watched Mikey just like spring into action and go and grab him. And then I grabbed my camera and got the tail end of that action. But I'm telling you guys, this is exactly why I love the Amazon. There is stuff that happens here that doesn't happen anywhere else. And what happens in the Amazon gets apparently shared all over YouTube. Right. Yeah, did you hear that? So yeah. no shenanigans tonight. That's right. Yeah. At Dubia.com, all the roaches are raised in-house in sterile conditions and then packed and shipped on-site directly to you. For all your Dubia needs, order today at Dubia.com. Or see the link in the description below. All right, we were eating lunch, actually, and uh, we weren't prepared. It's the heat of the day. It's literally 100 degrees out here. There's really nothing that we expected to be out. Mikey comes back to camp as we're eating lunch. So this is a baby anaconda over here. Between the rocks. I was swimming and I saw it had radio. You saw it, but you didn't catch it. Mikey, what is going on with you? You are the <laughs> anaconda he, master. He in the water? Yeah. Can you still see him? So am 
Mikey's going in for. There was a baby anaconda that Look was spotted that. down here, and that... uh, we interrupted our lunch to come find it. Uh huh. Is he there? Yeah. Grab him. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking to a rock here. Don't make him do it. You Don't know, make him do it. You I'm not getting in that water. There's piranhas. <laughs> There's anacondas in that water. There's I'm anaconda, not getting in that. Yeah. <laughs> what do you got there? It's down here. All right. I uh, here, Amy. Can I give you my cell phone so I don't get it all wet? Sure. And submerged. All right. Dave's, I'm going in. Dave's going in to get the anaconda. That's why I bring Dave Kaufman along. He wears t-shirt and shorts. Is it recording? Uh, yeah, it's still recording. All right. How far under Wait, is he? Can I? If me. I come on it's that rock. It's recording me. Turn it around. If I come on, if I come down on that rock, can I get, can I get to him or is he wedged under that rock? He's right here, but I think he can reach him. Okay, hang on. Oh my God, these rocks are like 150 degrees. So Mikey is a fantastic hunter, but they are used to pulling the snakes out of the place. Where is he? Right between the stones right there. Uh, I can't see him. I can't. Where is he? I have no light. Oh yeah, I got him, got him, got him, got him. Come here, buddy. Ow, you bit me. Why did you bite me? <clears throat> oh, come on. Woo! Now that is not a baby anaconda. <laughs> That's a big anaconda. That guy bit me up. Yeah, Holy that, crap. Yeah, that snake is... Uh... Oh, there. Could be a couple years old, actually. Yeah, let me just uh, clean off all that blood. But uh, look at that. This is, Mikey, this is not a baby anaconda. I thought I was reaching in for a baby anaconda, and all of a sudden I felt those teeth dig right into my radial pulse, which I'm squirting blood at a life-threatening level right now. But uh, this is a, not a sizable anaconda, because it's an anaconda, but I expected a little baby that I was going in there for. And as you could see, I can't see in there. It is completely dark under this crevice. So I did maybe what, I don't know, it was smart or dumb, or maybe a little bit of both, but I just reached in that dark crevice to pull out what could be, I don't know, four foot little anaconda. This is actually pretty amazing spot. We're not finding a lot of reptiles down here, but what reptiles we're finding are some of the coolest reptiles on the planet. I mean, anacondas oh, take a dump all over me. That's not the commentary I was going to say. I'm going to try to wedge out of this rock here. Not only is this a pretty nice sizable anaconda that I'm now going to stink like for a while, but where I'm standing right now, I don't know how I'm going to get out of here, so I may have to like swim to the other side. This is right about where I was catching those giant piranhas. And uh, I am bleeding from this anaconda bite. If I have to submerge myself and go into this water, bleeding like I am from this anaconda, and we have these giant piranhas, and I'm talking giant piranhas. Here's actually a clip of me catching one of these giant piranhas from Dave Kaufman's Fishing Adventures. Those videos are coming up. Oh, there he is. There he is. He's a big dude. He's a big dude. He's a big dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Success. And it is the biggest piranha that has ever been caught in these waters. <laughs> right? <laughs> Kinnick, right? Yeah, yeah. The biggest piranha? Easy there. You've got teeth I don't want to meet. That is a freaking black piranha. Look at those teeth. Look at those eyes. That is just something absolutely amazing. This is exactly one of the fish that I wanted to catch here. But now you see why, if I'm bleeding, I don't want to get back in that water right now. So I think what I'm going to do is try to wedge myself out of this little rock crevice area here. Bob, do you want uh, yeah, I'll to take, the take this anaconda yep. and I'll try to Let me put my camera get down. myself out of my dangerous predicament? Okay. Now, I noticed that you're completely dry. I am dry, Dave. How does that feel? Here's the thing, I brought you to get wet. Oh. In this, I'm wearing nice clothes, so. Ugh. And I'm wearing clothes that. And also. Here, here hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me just, uh, let me hold his mouth. Yep. There Thanks. you go, you got him? Got him, yeah. All right, here, go, go poop on Bob now. Now can I get up? I think that I can just wedge my big old Sasquatch self out of here. Yep, I got it, I got it, I got it. 
All right. Uh, so this water is really hot, but these sandals that I'm wearing are not really good for walking on rocks. So I've got to take these off. Otherwise I'm going to slip and fall and that will be comical. But now I'm walking on rocks that literally are about 125 degrees and my feet are burning. Okay, all right. All right, so I got that anaconda out. Look at this, I am, I mean, he literally zapped me here, zapped me here. My radial pulse actually goes here. If he would have bit into that radial pulse, it usually it goes here, but mine goes here. I would be squirting blood all over the place. Schools of piranhas would be coming at me and I would have no choice but to take those piranhas and flip them up at Bob. But we got I'm this so anaconda out. All right, let me, let's stretch this guy out. And see I think, I think he's he longer than four feet. He's, he's, this is not a baby anaconda. No, huh? And again, maybe reaching into a dark crevice after a big snake like this, maybe in retrospect, wasn't the best option, but it was the most awesome option. Oh man, look at this big snake. So here, stretch him out a little bit. I've got the you, very stinky end. You've, uh, right. I'm, I actually would rather have the bitey end at this point. You don't want the pooping this. end? Yeah, it's... Uh, you got the bitey well, end? Well, it's the musking end. Hey. I mean, you can see all that musk on me. I went in and got this guy. I know, I I'm get it. I'm choosing the bitey end. I you can have it. the poopy end. Yes. But just from the looks of him, this is probably a couple year old anaconda. This is a very sizable, beefy, and even at this size, I mean, you can just feel the muscles yeah, on this guy. So this strong. guy is 100% muscles and teeth and a cloaca that's gonna poop on Bob. Yeah. But, oh my God, this is awesome. Now, Mikey, come in here real quick. All right, so this is Mikey. Mikey has been with us out here in the jungle for as long as we've been out here. You are a five generation seasoned hunter out here. You have hunted the biggest game in the forest. Do you know what a baby anaconda looks like? <laughs> <laughs> it's on you. Turn it, turn it around, around. Turn it around. <laughs> Zilla has everything you need for your reptile pets, from caging to lighting and everything in between. To see their entire catalog and find out where you can get Zilla products near you, visit ZillaRules.com. All right, so <laughs> we had to switch to my cell phone because what a time for my GoPro battery to die. My other camera's back up at camp. But uh, Mikey, you you hunted the biggest game out here, including man. Yeah. Really? <laughs> uh -huh. But this is the first anaconda that you've ever had in your hands. Yes. That is, what, what does he feel like to you? I mean, you've seen millions of these guys out here. Millions? Thousands? Mm. Trillions? <laughs> you've seen a lot of these out here, yeah. but this is the first time you've ever actually got to hold one. What, what are you feeling right now? A little bit terrified. A little bit terrified? <laughs> Never hold one of these before in my hand, so. You know what I always tell people when I give them a snake to hold for the first time? I mean, just feel how soft he is. You just, yeah, yeah, see? Very nice. No, this, uh, with the skills. There you go. <laughs> so these have just been recently discovered to be a separate species mm -hmm. uh, from, uh, green anacondas were thought to be one species. Now they've been separated into northerns and southerns. And uh, in that paper, they were talking about that the genetic difference between humans and chimpanzees is what, 2%? 2%. 2%. That, that's the difference between us and the chimp. Right, between us and chimpanzees. The difference between the northerns and the southerns is 5%, which means that we are more closely related to chimpanzees than the northern anaconda is related to the southern, but they look almost identical. There was no way without DNA testing to know that these were two separate species. But this is the northern, because we're up here in Suriname, and uh, this, I believe, is the bigger of the two. And, th and here's an interesting thing about this also, is that they share a territory in French Guiana, and they don't have any evidence that the two species are interbreeding even. Right. So when a northern sees a southern, they go, I don't want to breed with that. Right. But they look exactly the same. This is an absolute amazing find. So right now, it's the heat of the day. We were eating lunch. We weren't expecting to do anything because it's so hot out here. It's over 100 degrees. And this guy was out cruising around in the water, never expected to herp in this kind of heat. But here we are with one of the most amazing Amazon snakes that you can find. Just an icon of the Amazon. 
So anacondas, they're in the boa family. They are related to boas. They give live birth like boas, but there's a couple of differences. And one of those is that if you look, his eyes are on the top of his head. So what he's doing is he's doing just like an alligator or a crocodile is doing. Most of his body is going to be submerged, but he can just lift up his head just a little bit so that his eyes are the only thing coming out of the surface. And any prey item that came down to the river to drink that he's stalking is not going to know that there's a 20 foot monster that's coming up to have them for lunch because all that comes out of the water are his eyes just like a crocodile or an alligator all right guys so i'm gonna hand this guy over to bomb he's gonna do his song and dance for his videos if you aren't watching bob over at green room pythons that link is in the description below bob take it over and then Thanks, we're Steve. gonna put this guy right back in the rocks where we got him all right mikey do you want to release or should i release yeah. i can release yeah. you don't want to release yeah. you want to touch him one last time you want to give him a kiss <laughs> give him a kiss there you go. All right, so we are just going to gently set him or her down in the water. There we go. Let her get a little bit acclimated, ready to go. So we're gonna just let her sit here for a second, get acclimated to being released. And then, just like that, one, two, three, she goes, or he, or stays, or comes right at me, or, or, or. Buddy, I just let you go. Look at this. He's just crawling right back up to me. I, I really believe that anacondas absolutely love me. All right, here, come here. Why don't we, here, come here, come here, come here. There you go. Off you go there. Look at that, right back down into the rocks, just like that. That is a big snake. Mikey, high five on that. Thank you for telling us. All right, guys, so that <laughs> was a dream come true to come out here to the Amazon and find my dream snake, the anaconda. But that was just a little one. These guys grow huge out here. And these anacondas are primarily nocturnal. This guy was wedged underneath a rock. I don't believe he was out hunting during the day. You have to explain to us. What were you doing in the crevice? I was swimming. You were swimming? Yes, got off my body. In a crevice, in a rock crevice. You got the whole river, you go in a crevice. Yes. I like you. As I was saying, Anacondas are primarily nocturnal, and there are giants out here. So, one of these nights that we're out here, we have a shot at really finding a giant out here. Bob? Yeah. Giant. Giant anaconda. Giant anaconda. Yes. Gi giant. Let's go for it. Let's go back and eat lunch. So guys, that is just about as real and as raw as it gets here in the Amazon. Being in a river like that, the Quarantine River, and, you know, when I say that it's infested with piranhas and electric eels, that is not me being dramatic. There are giant piranhas. There are giant electric eels in there. And with me bleeding, that was a real threat of me getting further into that water. They would have come right to me, and that's not a joke. So, being here in Suriname, catching wild anacondas in the wild, this is a dream come true. This is one of the greatest reptile adventures I have ever had. So guys, real quick, I just want to give a real quick shout out and a thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. If you would like to become a Patreon supporter, that link is in the description below. Check that out. And guys, as always, thanks for watching. And until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.